What is going on, Jerome's? Minnesota Fighting Vikings looking to secure the division while moving to 11-3 and against the Indianapolis Colts on Saturday. Saturday. So here we got 10. 10 uh, keys for a Vikings victory. Uh, number one, get after Matt Ryan's ass. Now, the pass rush has been relatively inert the last couple of weeks. In fact, the last four weeks. Uh, Zadarius Smith hasn't had a sack in six games. Daniil hasn't had a sack in four games. Everyone is pissed off. Everyone knows that they got to get something done. And Matt Ryan, uh, he's unfortunately going to get the brunt of this like I'm looking for an old school vintage like nine sack game can we, can we get pressure on like 60% of the dropbacks Colts are 27th in pass blocking uh, so they will they will give it up like they've been in flux up front uh, it's been an issue all damn year long that's why the Colts offense has been so garbaggio uh, so I do think that Daniil and Zadarius and uh, Diesel Dalvin Thompson Harrison Phillips uh, PJ2 Wanham I think that they can get after Matt Ryan's ass this is a perfect setup for a get right game a statement game everyone's pissed off uh, the media and fans are writing them off no this will not stand. Hold serve at home and just get after it. Next up, key number two, tool time for Jonathan Taylor Thomas. So he is their most dangerous weapon. And of course, we know the Vikings against the run game. But the offensive line, I mean, even with Quentin Nelson, even with Ryan Kelly, it's really just been a mess up front. Uh, but the Vikings can capitalize on it. Also, if they can get ahead by double digits, you know, 14, 17 points. It makes him one-dimensional. It takes JTT out of the game, which would be fantastic because he's a stupid badger anyway. So... Yeah, and just get after in the in run defense. Next up, key number three. Literally don't allow points and yards. I mean, I, I understand that, that that is so simplistic, but, I mean, this defense has been gash. They're, uh, they're dead last in the league in yards allowed, uh, bad in points, bad in the red zone, even though they won a six against the Jets, whatever. But the Colts' offense, 31st in scoring, 25th in yards. You are at home. This is a weird Saturday game. Uh, yes, against Jeff Saturday. So, but... If the Colts honestly come in and Matt Ryan throws for 315 and three touchdowns, just cancel the season. It's over. It's over at that point, man. But, again, this is a get-right confidence-building game. Uh, can they shut things down? I think they absolutely can. Next up, key number four, locked out of Michael Pittman Jr. Also, by the way, Alex Pierce, the, the rookie out of Cincinnati, whoo. Liked him in the draft. He's looking really damn good. But Michael Pierce is their wide receiver one, and for good reason. Uh, 76 catches, 755 yards, receiving two tutties uh, on the season on 107 targets. Uh, he's big. He is physical. He's a damn good receiver. Uh, I think that he is uh, one of the more uh, underrated young players in the league. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Plus, he moves around. Uh, Patrick Peterson, Cameron Tiny Dancer coming off of illness, also coming off that ankle injury where he was on injured reserve. Duke Shelley. Like, like someone's got to be able to lock uh, Michael Pittman down. Uh, next up, key number five, other side. So Justin Jefferson against Stephon Gilmore. Now, Gilmore, the veteran, he can still do it. He's likely going to be shadowing Justin Jefferson. And Gilmore, respect, is still one of the best uh, outside corners in the league. But Jefferson, fresh off his 223 game against the Lions. I think he has a chance to put on a show. It's a standalone game, even though it's on a Saturday afternoon. It's going to be on national TV, NFL Network, so uh, people are all going to be watching him. Plus, he does have a legit chance to go for 2K. He's got four games. He needs 500 yards. Uh, plus, he's on the cusp uh, of setting the Vikings single-season uh, receiving yardage record, which is no small feat when you got a team that had Randy Moss and Chris Carter. So I think J.J. is going to come in. I think he's going to be pissed off. I think that he knows that uh, the Vikings should have got it done against the Lions. I think that he knows that it, it's on him. And I think that the offense has a chance to really explode. I think that Jefferson has a chance to show up and show it against a very, very elite corner in Stephon Gilmore. Next up, key number six, revenge of the run game. So the Vikings run game against the Lions, it was extremely poopy for a myriad of reasons. No Derrissaw, no Bradbury. Lions were selling out. Dalvin was just uh, Dalvin and Madison were contacted behind the line of scrimmage on 53% of the thing. It was, it was just bad. But 22 yards rushing, five in the first half, long of five. By the way, 1.5 yards per carry, it's no good. Uh, but the Colts have allowed 1,640 yards on the ground, 15 touchdowns. And this is set up where the Colts are going to – Colts defense is going to uh, be set up to try and take away Justin Jefferson. Uh, maybe the, the Vikings spread it out. Maybe they keep the, the Colts in their nickel, and maybe the Vikings just pound it. Maybe the Vikings just pound away, and then Dalvin, uh, Dalvin Cook uh, gets off the schneid. I think that he could have a big game. Also, having Christian Derrissaw back, potentially getting Bradbury back, is going to be huge for the uh, Vikings offensive line up front. And just like the defense, like this is a get-right game. Like This is one where it's like, hey, we're pissed off. We got to get our confidence back. We got to get our groove back uh, for the final four games into the playoffs. I think this could be set up for that. Next up, number seven, 
Angry Kirk tames wild horses. This is a word salad. Like, there was a pun in there somewhere. I don't know. But Kirk Cousins, fresh off his uh, 400-yard game against the Lions. Uh, he's playing some of the best football of his career. He's extremely dialed in, even though he's taken a lot of punishment. Uh, help is on the way with Bradbury and Derisaw being back in the lineup. Uh, and I think that this has a chance to be... Hey, Kirk, you know, even though it's not a primetime game, this is a standalone game. There's no other games going at noon on Saturday. So I think that he has a chance to show up and show out and just be like, hey, you know, we're still 10 and 3. We're going to be 11 and 3. I'm going to put on a show uh, against the Colts. We're going to get a big time victory and then go from there. Uh, next up, number eight. Remember, this is for the division. Where I don't know if they remembered that the Vikings could have won the division against the Lions uh, last Sunday. Like I, they, they just, it, it was flat. It was a bad game plan. Players didn't really look engaged. I don't know what it was, but no urgency against the Lions that has to change against the Colts. Where maybe the Lions game was that slap in the face wake up call. Uh, it was a slap in the face how quickly I was replaced. You could have secured the division. It could have been a hat and t-shirt game. All that la di da di da. Uh, it's a it's a hmm, 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 uh, Minnesota Vikings, all, all that stuff. But now uh, I spelled remember wrong, didn't I? <laughs> Got him. Actually, no, I'm gonna leave it like that. Screw it. Uh, so remember, this is for the division, and you have to you have a chance to do it at home in front of your fans, which would be a great accomplishment. People are gonna go nuts. Da da skull baru. And so everyone's gotta get their ish together on Saturday. Next up, number nine, win the turnover battle, and the Vikings. Maybe not so much uh, against the Lions, but the defense has been opportunistic this season where that's been the great equalizer, getting sacks and getting turnovers. Now, they haven't done it much in the last four weeks, uh, but they certainly can get back to where they once belong and, and get after where the Colts are 32nd in the NFL. Sorry, Colts offense is 32nd in the NFL. And they've given up 26 times. You saw against the, the Cowboys, Matt Ryan's turnovers, like uh, that let things get out of hand quite quickly. And the defense only has 12 takeaways. They're at bottom of the league in terms of uh, turnovers over differential so the vikings have a chance to really capitalize uh, against the colts uh, don't give it up take a couple away steal a couple possessions and go from there lastly key number 10 special teams back to being special so first off greg joseph don't miss that's a given. But uh, they were fooled on that fake punt uh, on uh, Sunday by the Lions. Also, the, the punt coverage was not very good. Uh, but Matt Daniels, I mean, he's too proud. And this uh, this third phase is too talented for them to go out like that. I mean, Ryan Wright is still going to be a boomer. Uh, so special teams, third phase, get back to being uh, the, the unit that we know and love. Uh, lastly, final score prediction. I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling re I'm feeling really good about this one, and I, I think that the Vikings will move to 11 and three. I think the offensive line will be back and solidified. I think Cousins will have a game. I think Jefferson will light up Stephon Gilmore. I think Dalvin will have a hundred plus, uh, maybe a touchdown or two. I think the defense will actually look good against the Colts. I think that the pass rush will get home four or five times. I think they'll get two turnovers, and I, I think this is going to be a big-time win. Vikings take the division uh, after topping the Colts 33-13. to i got to make sure I, I, I articulate the numbers correctly uh, this time around as opposed to last week. But uh, that's it. Uh, that is uh, our 10 keys to a Vikings victory. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts. What are your keys? Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.